So there have been some big long-term winners in the stock market, not just the ones that everyone thinks of, like Amazon and Microsoft that, you know, if you bought Microsoft in the 80s, you're on easy street today. There are a lot of stocks that have produced those kinds of returns over time. Um, now, it's not necessarily a good reason to buy a stock because it has returned, you know, 20,000% over the past 30 years or whatever some of these companies have done. In fact, it usually means that they've reached kind of a stage of maturity and they're not going to do those kind of returns uh, for the next few year, few decades. But it can be a worthwhile thing to study as an investor. Um, so, some of the themes that I noticed, for example, among the best performing stocks in the market are they tend to prioritize buybacks and returning capital to shareholders over time. And just they consider themselves capital allocators. Um, a lot of the companies, we've talked about this with real estate, uh, Tyler, when we were looking at public storage was one of the big ones. Uh, they don't dilute shareholders. They're very, very cautious about ish issuing equity. Um, their public storage is a rarity for a real estate company. They haven't issued a whole lot of shares over the years, and that's been a big contributor to their returns. So what are some of the things that you notice? I know you've looked into a lot of these kind of high performing companies that no one's heard of. Um, and I thank you for getting a lot of them on my radar. But what have you noticed in some of in in, in some common themes? Yeah, the, a couple of things that have really stood out to me is I, I've kind of been on this quest to look at like the special sauce in in high performing companies. Is there are a lot of just industries that seem to be conducive to long term winning investments, and some that just aren't. And it, like, I think a lot of people will look at like the exceptions and say, well, look at this one. Obviously, they can still make money, but kind of on average, you know, things never don't ever don't always turn out great in these industries. Media is a great example of this. Right. If you look at, you know, everyone will say, well, look at Netflix. Look how awesome Netflix has done. It's like, yeah, but look at CBS Viacom. Look at. Uh, you know, for it, after Disney's relatively good run over the past several years, over the very long haul, it's, you know, it's, it's had its issues over times and really struck gold with the, the bundled cable thing with ESPN and, and things like that. So media, fitness, leisure, these are really businesses that never been conducive to a lot of like long-term shareholder growth, but there are, you know, but conversely, you think of industries like defense, insurance, industrial manufacturing, uh, real estate, utilities, things like that. Companies that are extremely durable, that can really withstand the test of time. Like I said, you know, you kind of mentioned it earlier. These aren't necessarily businesses that are growing at these super clips that we see out of like Silicon Valley startups or, you know, the, the go-go growth investors that I think a lot of people think they're going to find these fantastic investments, but businesses that grow at steady clips and return capital to shareholders, like you said, you know, have that discipline to not dilute shareholders and, you know, kind of the, the true North of if I have a return on invested capital greater than my cost of capital, how much it costs for me to run my business or to invest in new things over the very long term, these things really shine and they bring out the best in these businesses. And they're the ones that have shown to find fantastic results. And to me, the thing that's really kind of changed my thinking is, is to go look in these places that not a lot of people are looking because there are fantastic businesses, medical supplies, medical equipment and diagnostics. It was a business I wouldn't have even considered three years ago. But then when I started looking at all the companies that have just been fantastic winners in this, like Thermo uh, Fisher Scientific, in, uh, Intuitive Surgical, the list goes on. I could go on for a really long time. And it, it's things like that that really made me like reconsider what I'm doing as an investor and how investors can do better by looking in places a lot of people aren't. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to click subscribe if you don't subscribe to my channel already. And as always, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. Be sure to visit www.fool.com slash Frankel to receive the 10, top 10 best stocks to buy now.